Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Remember, if you are attending Cisco Live in Vegas, let me know. I'll come and say hi and we can meet in person. There'll be no awkwardness, just me chatting like I do into your ears every single day. So if you'd like to meet me, give me a shout. Uh, But on with today's episode. And I recently read that Tech Systems published its 2022 State of Digital Transformation report, which builds on the findings of the previous two reports. And the first two included a global view, including respondents from Europe and Asia. But the report found that that leaders who strategically applied technology to enable business transformation thrived and further increased the gap between themselves and digital laggards. Everything sounds great, right? But there were some other key points in there that really stood out to me, such as two out of five organisations note that digital transformation initiatives failed to deliver the identified outcomes. And 9 out of 10 organisations indicated that the skills critical to their workforce are also the areas where they experience the most significant gaps. So I want to dive into some of the findings from this report. So I invited them on the podcast today and thankfully they said yes. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to the US where Ram Plan Apen is waiting to share his story and insights from this report. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about your journey, how you got here, and ultimately share your origin story with everyone listening? Yeah, absolutely, Neil. Um, I'm Ram Palneerpan. I live in sunny California, currently serving as a chief technology officer for Tech Systems Global Services. Uh, I have been in this industry for the last 22 years. Um, I came into Tech Systems through an acquisition 10 years back. I have built a great career here uh, from leading pre-sales to currently CTO for our full stack services. Uh, I'm at heart a data and a math nerd, a uh, huge admirer for Fibonacci sequence um, in nature. Uh, I look at flowers, I look at plants and start looking at patterns. Um, even yesterday, uh, I, I need to cut a pineapple and I was spending more than uh, the time needed to cut a pineapple. So, so that's the uh, a little bit of uh, my interest and in, and in what I do. Um, coming back to your question of my origin story, um, I did my engineering, uh, then did my masters uh, in business administration back in India. Uh, it's, it's it's 22 years now uh, since I completed. Um, the road to CTO is. Uh, quite a steady one uh, because of few good qualities that I learned over a period of time uh, from uh, many people, uh, including my father. Um, I had some great mentors, um, as well as a few instances uh, uh, and moments that shaped uh, me up to be a person who I am. Wow. Um, well, certainly, I would like to. Yeah, go on. Sorry. Go ahead. No, uh, uh, certainly I would like to share two such moments, uh, Neil, uh, that allowed me to build my strength. Um, one is uh, primarily, you all very well know that tech space is fast changing. And uh, um, when I look back, uh, probably six or seven years back, um, we were doing predominantly um, Oracle SQL Server um, based uh, data analytics work, uh, and I was heading the data analytics practice. Um, we had close to around 200 plus folks at, at a point when everybody was moving away from data analytics uh, from a legacy world to Hadoop and, and uh, big data. Um, there was a point where our uh, costs have been going up because a lot of people were coming onto the bench. And um, uh, that was a huge uh, challenge and, all, and an opportunity thrown at me. So I worked with our uh, management team, uh, asked for a three months time frame where we can we, we floated a small team to retrain our folks. And today you, you will be hearing more around um, how to make those retraining at a scale. Um, certainly, you know, many of these data engineers, um, they, they are very much uh, thankful and, and with us. 
um and uh, we we were able to successfully retrain them and uh, did some awesome work on on uh, hadoop and cloudera and big data side as well as now they are all now working on multiple cloud technologies um i think um if you look at from that transition perspective or transformation perspective for our people uh, we always have the principle of uh, three bucket strategy um uh, innovation um uh, ramp up and then sunset so so uh, then the, the folks who are in the sunset phase of their skills they will be working on uh, exploration or innovation for the new newer technology so so by that way we are able to have a healthy balance of moving them across the chain and uh, suddenly that had helped me to uh have a good uh, um um team at the same time a trustable team um, who who strongly believes on a continuous uh, learning experience what a great story and he wasn't joking when you said you're a, a full on tech geek and maths nerd i love how even a simple act of opening a pineapple or cutting open a pineapple and you're still looking for those patterns there i absolutely <laughs> love that and of course it was that path that led you to tech systems where you're on a mission to accelerate business transformation by solving complex technology uh, business and talent and business and talent challenges right across the globe but i'm conscious there will be a few people listening hearing about you for the first time so can you tell the listeners a little bit more about tech systems and uh, and also the markets that you serve yeah sure absolutely uh, tech systems is a full stack uh, it service provider working with our customers and maximizing the technology roi drive business performance Uh, elevate customer experience and mobilize talent um we work with more than 80% of the fortune 500 companies across the world um and we have a very a large presence in north america with offices almost in every city you can name it uh, we have a strong presence in emia uh, we have development centers uh, in india and philippines um Uh, also what we have uh, done over the past uh, multiple years is building a strong partnership ecosystem of technology partnerships um, um we have uh, we have we are great partners for aws microsoft google salesforce service now and many others um and certainly uh, we are a one stop shop for any of the business technology and talent solutions that customers needs And one of the reasons I invited you on the podcast today was to talk about the 2022 State of Digital Transformation report that you guys recently released, which was something I came across online. And can you tell me more about the report and and who you surveyed just for people listening that haven't seen it? Yeah, absolutely me. Um uh, this is the third annual report. Um uh, we have been doing continuously for the last three years. and what we did um, this time a little bit different than what we used to do um, the, the same characteristics of looking at uh, companies where they have invested on digital and looking at those uh, digital leaders um, who are primarily involved in decision making adapting new strategies uh, that can help their business transform um, we surveyed close to around 600 business and technology decision makers uh across uh, six countries uh, united states canada china india singapore and united kingdom um collecting these most uh, uh, expansive uh, data set and building a report um and uh, when we released the report um, i also read uh, something from satya nadella because the the timeliness of the report was also uh, so awesome uh he said a very really a thought provoking uh 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 thought provoking sentence out there what he said is that digital technology is a deflationary force in an inflationary economy um uh, i i felt truly so because our lives have changed in the last two or three years with uh, covid and everything um we do a lot more of uh, shopping uh, as well as food delivered uh, or ordered through the phone 
um, than uh, going and doing it in, in person. So, so all of this is primarily um, the organizations have ramped up on on digital technology, and certainly that is going to help um, uh, uh, transform companies how they do business. And one of the standout stats from the report for me was that I think it was two out of five organizations noted that digital transformation initiatives failed to deliver the identified outcomes. I mean, can you expand on that? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, so when, I, when I'm looking at the success of a digital transformation, um, there are three parts to it. One is a customer experience. Uh, second is user adoption. Third is uh, continuous feedback loop. If any of these things are missing, then you are going to lose your focus. Um, and and a leader in a digital transformation versus a laggard in a digital transformation is exactly the uh, exactly the difference of what you do and uh, what you expect. Um, so what we have seen is that. Out of 44% of the leaders, um, they have done an investment of more than 10 million year over year, and uh, they were able to fuel that digital transformation in order to get um, 12 percentage or more return on investment in one to three years. But whereas when we look at the laggards, um, Around 25% of the laggards only invested more than 10 million. And that ROI was close to three to five years. The difference is primarily because of the three things which I mentioned. Um, it is um, customer experience, um, the end customer experience. Um, second is user adoption. And the third one is a feedback loop of how you keep delivering incremental value to your customers. And another worrying stat there was, I think it was nine out of 10 organizations indicated that the skills that were critical to their workforce are also areas where they experienced the most significant gaps. Can you expand on, on what some of those skill gaps were? Were there, were there any trends a, across the board? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But that's just a great, great question, Neil. When you look at digital technologies and digital transformation, right? The core of digital technology and digital transformation, what we need is cloud, data, AI, and security. And all of these four components of any of the digital technology, um, they, they, these are um, skills that, that have come up in the last decade are probably uh, uh, 15 years, 10 to 15 years. Um, so when you look at the availability of people who are trained on cyber security, there is a skill gap of 32%. So, so, so every three positions you have, one position you don't have uh, anybody to fill. Um, if you look at artificial intelligence, the skill gap is 57 percentage, which is pretty huge. Um, when you, uh, that means that every every two positions, uh, you can fill only one position. Uh, if you look at data analytics, 38 percentage, which means that every three position you have only one position you can fill. Similar for cloud computing. So what this shows is that the availability of a trained resources in the marketplace is less. Mm. And that means that either your costs are going to go up or you are going to compromise on the quality. So certainly we need to start looking at how do we overcome these skill gaps. And what do you think the, the key is in overcoming these skill gaps? Because it is a, it's a worldwide problem, the skill shortage, et cetera, and a lot of the, the roles that people are looking for, they can't just go and grab someone off the street because they're not there. Is it internally training and upskilling people or, or, or something else? Yeah, yeah. You, you got it, Neil. Um, yeah. um, it's, it's the principle of three R's, yeah. recruit, retrain, retain, right? Yeah. 
um, recruit, recruit the best talent, um, attract the talent, um, either lateral or even the next gen workforce, um, because they are born with a digital first mindset. Um, you can retrain your business people, business teams. They know business really well than anybody else from the street. And it is easier to train them on digital skills and uh, they can primarily drive a lot more um, uh, from from retraining them. The last but not the least is retaining. In today's world, with the environment and everything, we need to know what our people want and we need to retain them. I think uh, uh, these three uh, R's are very much critical for the success. And when you blend this along with continuous learning as as a core principle, um, you can certainly be a leader in digital transformation for your organization. And if we were to look at the zoom out and look at the report, was there anything in there that surprised you at all? Because obviously you you work in the heart of this space. So, uh, and I know you're you're very analytical, but I, I'm curious if there was anything that, that really took you by surprise in there. You, you caught me. Um, so when we talk about the skill gaps, um, the top uh, uh, digital experience goals for 2022, yeah. um, it was coming up as customer experience improvement, which is awesome. Yeah. And when we look at the lowest, um, it it talks about employee experience. So so you see you see the contradiction. You want to do more for your customers, which is customer experience improvement, but you are not investing on employee experience in digital transformation. Mm. So that is primarily ending up in skill gaps. That is what is ending up. You are not able to attract the right talent. So so I think that is opportunity to primarily have the customer experience as well as employee experience uplifted because both are um, uh, two sides of the coin for the problem to solve. And what would you say the biggest takeaways of the report are? And how is it on how the results of that report also helping you you better serve your customers too? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think we should follow the leader's behavior for success. Right? Yeah. Uh, what that really means is that that needs to be a continuous funding. Um, we need to uh, keep delivering value incrementally, and it needs to be a substantial value for all your transformation. Uh, drive user adoption. Uh, don't have an, that as an afterthought. Right away, whatever we are releasing, we need to see how the users are using, uh, why they are not using, and what incremental changes that we can make. So, so I think that with, with that in mind, certainly we can become a leader. And I appreciate you're probably limited as to what you can share with me today, but what's next for tech systems? What's your big focus as a company? Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think from, from tech systems perspective, customer is always at the center of what we do. Um, previously, customers were buying capabilities and we were delivering capabilities. Now we are moving away to delivering value, um, uh, value in in what they want, what they buy from us. And in order to drive this, our biggest focus is user adoption, um, which can maximize the technology ROI and the investment that our customers are making. Certainly, that that's our huge focus for now. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to share your story and the insights from the report today. But before I let you go, I'm going to have a little bit of fun with you now because I always ask my guests to leave everyone listening with uh, a personal note of inspiration. So today I'm going to ask you, can you leave us with a book that has inspired you or maybe share a favorite song of yours that we can add to our Spotify playlist? All I ask is uh, you give us a, a story behind the choice or a reason behind your choice. So what are you going to go with today, a book or a song for our Spotify playlist? Yeah, my origin is India. I'm a huge Bollywood fan, and uh, there are a bunch of Bollywood songs oh, which are out nice. there. Um, <laughs> awesome. My favorite uh, music director is 
A.R. Rahman. Um, he got an Oscar sometime back for a song called Jay Hope. Um, uh, really inspiring to see him on the stage, uh, on the world stage, uh, when he received Oscar um, with, with, with a, such a huge applause and crowd out there. Um, the first sentence he spoke is uh, in his native language, Tamil, which, which is native language of me as well. And uh, the first sentence was, uh, he was thanking God. So, so inspirational. Uh, it's a global, like, he is a global icon and, and well celebrated within India as well as the subcontinent. So, Jay Ho, uh, uh, his, his Oscar winning song is uh, one of my favorite. Wow, what a great choice. I know that one. I'll get that added to our Spotify playlist. And uh, before I let you go, though, I'm conscious we've been talking about the report today and all things tech systems. If people wanted to access that report, find out more information about tech systems, contact your team, what's the best starting point for everything? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Listeners can visit techsystems.com. They can follow us on Twitter at techsystems. Uh, as well as LinkedIn, uh, certainly looking forward for uh, interacting with them. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, talking about the 2022 State of Digital Transformation Report, some fascinating stats in there and interesting in where everything's heading, but more than anything, wash down with your personal story and how you got here and the great work that you're doing. Thank you so much for sitting down with me today and taking the, the time to share that with everyone listening. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Neil. I think as leaders continue to invest in all aspects of digital transformation, the expected return on investment is more immediate. And with business leaders expecting ROI on those investments in one to three years compared to the laggards at three to five years, it's easy to see how that gap is widening. So a big thank you to Tech Systems for sharing how they recognise that each organisation's road to transformation is rarely a straight line and actually works with partners to map out those attainable wins to identify a path to long-term success in business transformation. That is what it's all about. But we revealed a lot of stats in today's episode. So if you're a business leader, I'd love to hear your experiences in your initiatives. If anything resonated with you, if you think we missed anything out, if you disagreed with anything, I'd love to hear all of it and much more. So... (laughs) Email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram at Neil C. Hughes. My website is techblogwriter.co.uk. Let me know your thoughts. But now it's time for me to spin the wheel and decide what topic we're going to talk about tomorrow. Today was digital transformation. What can I come up with tomorrow? Well, for that, you're going to have to join me again. <laughs> so a big thank you for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.